The holiday season is here, which means Christmas beers are back. We're going to talk about some of the best. What's the best Christmas present I ever got? Tailgate hoodie, building koozie, and a bottle of He's not Joe Sixpack. He's Robert Zadarko. And from Ship Bottom in Swarthmore, it's an all-new episode of What's Brewing. What's Brewing is brought to you in part by Monco Makers Passport. Download your free digital pass and sip your way through Montgomery County. And by the Conchahawken Brewing Company, the perfect place for your holiday gathering. Reach out today at events at conchahawkenbrewing.com. Hey, welcome to an all new episode of What's Brewing. We're at one of our favorite places, Ship Bottoms. Got the Blendery and Brew House uh, here in Swarthmore. He's Robert Zarka. We'll explain a little bit of that in just a moment. What is, what is all this food? Occasionally yours from across the street brought us some great uh, breakfast and lunch options. Well, I do plan to enjoy some of that, but right now we are drinking uh, and we are starting with Christmas beers today. Actually, I'm drinking what I always drink here, which is your great Mexican stuff. Yeah, always so have it on tap. Going to start with that. For yes, you. but this topic today is Christmas beers. By the way, happy holidays, everybody! And when I think of Christmas beers, before I get to the one I'm going to open, actually, let me open it first. This is the iconic Mad Elf beer, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But you, as the creator of beers, Robert Zarko, tell me what what defines a Christmas beer. What do we mean when we're saying Christmas beer? Something for the cold weather, something that's a Belgian triple, Belgian quad, uh, <laughs> fruit in it. It's something you're going to sip uh, high in ABV, something 10 to 13 uh, percent. Very delicious. Mad Elf is iconic uh, from their branding to the liquid inside that bottle. Uh, very sought after beer and very refreshing. Here's to you. Cheers. Okay, so. And I can't drink many of these. No, no. This comes out at, I think, 11 point, 11 point something percent alcohol. Um, a lot of cherry, a lot of honey. It's interesting where you're doing a thing later with mead involving honey. Um, I love it. I, I could share you this bottle on Christmas Eve and that would be enough for me. Yeah, and I've had the big, I, the Magnum bottles of that. Whoa. I don't even know what to do. And one year I bought a keg of it and I probably had it for a month or so. All right, so what did you bring much. me for the tray? What are you guys doing? Uh, we did uh, Bonneville Snow Monster Ale. Uh, which is the same style. So this is a Belgian quad, 10%. It has figs, sugar plums, cherries, and honey in it. Um, same style of beer. Sounds like a Christmas carol. Exactly. And uh, the branding on it is is top notch. We love this beer. This is a sought after beer for us. People really enjoy it for the holidays. All right. So um, let's talk about the history of Christmas beer, which dates back to the early days of Christianity. Here's, oh, you're still pouring yourself. There you go. Uh, in Norway, okay, and they, they would have a party. They would, here's to you. Okay, let's try yours and then I'll get back to the story. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you, thank you. It's got a sweetness to it, but it's not um, sugary sweet. It is, it's like a cherry. Um, yeah, this is really nice. Yeah, we try to be subtle on the flavors and not overpowering. Yeah, overpower the beer. I like it, I like it. So back in Norwegian days, I'm talking like a thousand years ago, they passed laws that required peasants to brew a special beer leading up to Christmas and have a party. Failure to do so would mean fines and even losing your land. That's crazy. They had celebrations that involved them drinking to the Norse gods. After the Vikings invaded the British Isles, it traveled to Britain. And I think of traditional Christmas beers, what's it, wassail, that kind of thing? Yes. Those old kind of sweet things, so that's why it's become sweet. Um, brewers added new ingredients like juniper, other herbs to get interesting flavors, and a good Christmas beer was required to be strong. As you said, it's got to be strong. Yes. Okay. So. Something festive for the holiday celebration is one of those from Sierra Nevada. Um, 
Also Great Lakes uh, Christmas sale. Reminds well, let me, me let me show Christmas. you what I brought you. They were out of Great Lakes at my beer store, by the way. <laughs> oh, by the way, I go to the best beer store, Lower Marion uh, Beverage Company in uh, on Ardmore and Greenfield Road. Jim Martin does a great job. So this is one of the great ones. This is the Anchor Brewing Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Okay. Yeah, I've and, had this before. Yeah, and they Very do kind of a new style every year. Uh, this is the Conchi Brewing one. You can't catch me. We made a gingerbread ale. Awesome. This year, which uh, people we got to pop that open and try it. Uh, we we have time to do that. Dock Street makes the Winter Haze Pale Ale for the holidays, and I brought you one more. Okay, this is the Sierra Nevada Celebration Fresh Hop Ale. Uh, which again, this one goes back away. Let me ask you, do your customers start looking for it? Is it something now you do every year? Yeah, we do it every year. We started a couple years ago. Um, we try to get it on the shelves by November 1st. I've seen uh, Victory with Mary Monkey, Mad yeah. Elf being on in, in October. Personally, I feel like that's too soon, but we try to hit the market because everybody's looking for those beers sooner and sooner. So the way pumpkin ales now come out in what, July? Uh, some do. We do October 1st. With okay. Wow. Yeah. That's restraint, my friend. Exactly. We, Christmas we beers back. come out <laughs> earlier and earlier and earlier. You got a small window for that market, too. Yeah. So you have from November 1st until Christmas, and then nobody wants to drink them. Well, it's great stuff, and we really enjoy it. Okay. As I said at the start of the show, I've been doing this show for five years with the great Joe Sixpack, the esteemed authority on beer and a terrific partner. Well, since we filmed our last episode, Joe up and moved. We're going to catch up with him and explain what's going on in his life next. We're in Swarthmore at the Ship Bottom Blendery and Brew Company. All these good beers. You know what? I'm going to stick with my old favorite. Cheers. For what's brewing. So, what do you want to do today? Today, I want to run. I want to skate. I want to see a show. <laughs> I want to play. I want to eat. Like a lot. I want to sleep in a hotel. Can we do all that? We can do all that and more. Well, welcome back to What's Brewing, and shock of shocks, <laughs> looks who joins us. It, it appears that we're sitting next to each other, but we're actually 6,000 miles apart. I'm Glenn Mack now, and from France, my pal Joe Sixpack checks in. First time since you've moved, Joe Sixpack, tell us how it's going. Uh, it's going great. Uh, you know, I'm loving life here in France, and uh, I got to be honest with you, Glenn, uh, some big changes in my life. Uh, I've gone over to the other side. No, no. <laughs> You've become a wine guy. Say it ain't so. <laughs> what can I tell you? No, uh, I don't believe it. Yeah, seriously. Uh, there's plenty of really good beer here in the, uh, I've been living in Brittany now in a town called Rennes, which is the capital of Brittany in this Northwestern part of France. Uh, it's got a really good beer culture, uh, not quite up to Phillies, but uh, they're making a really nice uh, variety of beers here, uh, you know, with varying degrees of, uh, of uh, professionalism, I should, I guess is the best way to say it. Some of them are better than others, uh, but okay, I'm having well, a great I, time discovering the beer scene here. I, I will just say this, because this is the first time I've gotten to see your handsome face in a while. And, and uh, we're going to put the picture on the screen. This is how I picture you living in France. I actually was, I was at the Museum of Art in Philadelphia a couple of weeks ago, and I walked by this picture, this famous painting. I think it's by Manet. It is. And I said, this is Joe Sixpack in France. Is it an accurate portrayal of your life? Uh, you nailed me, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, sitting around, uh, smoking a pipe and, uh, and drinking a beer. That's, drinking that's, and, and it's, and listen, it's box. It's your favorite kind of beers. 
Exactly, exactly. Uh, although, you know, to be to be fair, they're not really making a whole lot of German style beers here in France. I'm not sure why. Maybe the French had a problem with the Germans. I, I really don't know. <laughs> it dates back about 80 years, but they might. Yeah, exactly. So what uh, what what is the beer scene there? What do you drink? What is the beer? Well, uh, we're talking in uh, December here and like back in Philly, uh, we have a pretty good Christmas beer selection going on right now. Uh, the small breweries here, and they're really small. They're 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 you know maybe the size of a of a small uh, brew pub for the most part, and they most of them bottle. They don't can here, and uh, but they they're all out with with uh, their beer de Noel uh, right now. Uh, I, I've, I've enjoyed this one in particular. This is one of the nice things about coming to France. This is called PVL. Yeah, uh, uh, Brazan de Diver, uh, which is winter brew, and it's made with something called uh, Cuba, or rather, it's a Tonka bean, which is completely illegal in America because what? it contains coumarin, which apparently is rather dangerous to, to eat in large quantities. So, <laughs> uh, so the French, are, the French are, will, will will give you something that you probably shouldn't be eating. <laughs> All right, well, just moderation, please. I don't want you yes. ODing on beer. Exactly. You've avoided exactly. that for all these years. Don't do it now. How do, and you're there with your lovely wife, how do the French in Rennes, which you, I think you told me is a town about 200,000 people or so, right? how do they respond to the resident Yank who's just guzzling down beer all the time? <laughs> uh, I'm kind of unusual. You know, the, 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 the craft beer crowd in France skews very young. Uh, not unlike in Philly, I guess, but you know they don't see guys like our age, Glenn, going in and asking about uh, you know their their uh, triple box or their uh, <laughs> unusual you know their hazy pale ales. So that's usually a young thing. Older people tend to drink wine here or cider. Uh, so they all know me now uh, when I come in. That's that's the guy who likes the good beer. That most of them know who, I, who Joe Sixpack is. Uh, I, I've I've directed him to my books and so on. So it's oh. that's been fun getting to make new <laughs> always friends. push product when you can. By the way, exactly. how do you say Joe Sixpack in French? How do you say? I, I'm not sure. The closest I can get to it is uh, Pierre Carafe, and. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's right. accurate or not. <laughs> I got to bring you home for one minute because we've been enjoying the Joe Six Pack Essentials all year long. And from 6,000 miles away, you're going to take a look at South Jersey. Yeah, I, I, I guess I, I, I beat an exit before we got through all the uh, the neighborhoods and such. And uh, we didn't want to forget South Jersey. Uh, we did the shore earlier, but South Jersey closer to the Philly area has become a really uh, exciting beer area. It was way behind the curve for the longest time. Uh, they changed some rules and we've talked about the whole food and beer problem there, but nonetheless, there's a number of really great breweries that I think are essentials in South Jersey. And they would include Tonewood, which you and I, uh, Glenn, yeah. are big fans of their beer. Uh, the original in Barrington and their new larger brewery in Oakland putting out some uh, great stuff we're all familiar with their Fuego IPA, uh, but uh, don't turn your back on their, their lagers. They're really fantastic lagers. Uh, uh, the second is called Bone Saw. They're in Glassboro. Really a wonderful spot. Uh, it's a big, wide open brewery with a separate barrel aging area, huge tap selection. They may have the biggest tap selection of any local brewery that I know of. Uh, right, for example, when I last checked, they had three different Bach beers on, which is unheard of. Uh, and finally, uh, in the Pinelands, Brotherton. You got to check out Brotherton. They're working out of a, uh, a former firehouse in Atco, New Jersey. Uh, I'm a fan of their dark beers, including uh, a really terrific array of stout beer. Well, the great stuff. Listen, even from all that distance, you're the guy who knows the local scene better than anybody else. How about we make this a regular thing? I'll talk to you next week. Okay, you got it, Glenn. That sounds good. Hey, we'll be back uh, right after this. I'll be back with Robert Zarko, Chip on and Brewing, and we'll discuss the best Christmas beer-related gift you ever got. This is with Joe Sickpack. What's brewing? 
Glenn Mack now here with Andrew Colligan, beer genius from Kachok and Brewing Company. Andrew, let's run down some of our core beers with some exciting new looks. Start with Type A. Our number one selling beer. Big citrus hop notes. Type A is our classic American IPA. Life Coach Hazy IPA. Hazy, bright, and juicy. The perfect beer for all day, every day. Puddler's Row. Uh, maybe the best thing to sell in the country. Back-to-back -back silver medals at the World Beer Cup. Backpack beer. Uh, the newest addition to our year-round lineup. Citrus and spicy with a refreshingly clean finish. Pack a few and enjoy the view. And everybody loves Ring the Bell. My go-to. Smooth, easy drinking lager that's perfect before, during, or after the game. This one's out of here. Oof. Thank you, Harry. All exciting choices. Enjoy them all and a whole lot more at all of our Conshohocken and Brewing Company locations. and wherever beer is sold. Hey, welcome back. We are at uh, Ship Bottom. You know what? You say it this time because I want it to be right and I want people to know exactly where we I'm gonna are. I'm going to probably say it wrong. Ship Bottom Brewery and Barrel House. Oh, I messed it up too. No. <laughs> Blendery and Barrel House, see? It is go. hard. There you go. And how do people <laughs> get here? How do people find us? Uh, you were right off the Blue Route down in Swarthmore, Pennsylvania, right next to the Swarthmore uh, train station. So it's a Swarthmore stop. Am I right? You're like the first, you are the first brewery in Swarthmore. Yes, we are. Nicely done. Well, thank you. Okay. And I am drinking the Abominable Snowman oh. Ale, your Christmas ale. And it got us into a topic this is our social media topic of the day. By the way, follow me on Twitter at Real Glenn Mac. Now follow the show at What's Brewing PA, um, and you can uh, follow uh, the uh, the great uh, Joe Sixpack at Beer Underscore Radar. Okay, uh, what is the best Christmas gift, holiday gift you ever received involving beer? I'm going to run some by you. Get your reaction. And your reaction can be anything from that's great to meh. Okay. All right. Sounds fair. All right. You have yours, by the way, which yeah, is great. People can come here and buy this. You stand up and show this because oh, okay. I think it's great. Koozie in the front again and a little bottle opener. Okay. This reminds me of mine. So I'll talk about mine because this would be great at a tailgate, right? You exactly. walk around, you got the, the bottle. and I mean, Keep your hands warm in the pocket. Right. Okay. Good. So the one I got, and we're going to show it here, which was entirely stupid, was a tailgate mitten designed to hold the beer. Um, and you see it there, and it's basically a big mitten that the beer can can fit in. Anybody who's tailgated during football season knows a cold can in your hands can, can start. It's not a pleasant feeling. There's always part of your brain that thinks it might get stuck to your hand, so they give you this. The problem is, once you put it on, you can't put the thing down and do anything else with your hand. So I never use it, but no cornhole or anything else. I no, assume. right? Yes, yeah. you can't play cornhole, and no if you can't do football, that, then yeah. right, that's yeah. you need both of your hands. Very well said. All right, so here are some of the best ones we got. I'm going to read them to you. Uh, Matthew Call says, "I gave my dad three of Joe Sixpack books." Well, that's self-serving, but that's good. Uh, now I'm going to read these next three in a row, and I want your reaction. Ida Kohler said, "I gave a beer making kit with everything needed to our nephew a few years ago. He's making his own beer." Tom Curley. A smoking kit for bourbon. It came with several flavored wood chips. I haven't done that yet. I want to try that. And Rock Mom says our son gave his dad a kit to make his own gin. Super fun to experiment with different herbs and flavorings. That could be great or could blow up on you, I'm sure. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, yeah. So are more people doing more in their own homes? Do you get that sense? It's how I started out, so I think people are doing it. How did you start out? Started out in my garage in Wallingford, Pennsylvania. Uh, it was a hobby, and then it kind of blew up from there. Yeah, it blew up in a nice way. Yeah. We actually have a homebrew meeting here um, every month, so oh, it's nice. kind of cool. They come in and talk about their beers. We get to try them. Uh, Matthew Ryan says, hey, free Mad Elf at the company Christmas party. I parked myself up there. I hope he wasn't driving home. That's all I got to say on that one. <laughs> yes. Uh, George Traeger, we got a picture of this one. Um, a couple of years ago, my wife bought me this cap collector. It was fun filling it up, and if you look at the picture, it would require a lot. But you, your beers are all cans. I'm with Conchac and Brewing. Most of ours are cans. Those caps, I mean, we've got them. Oh, why are Christmas beers all bottles, by the way? Is there? I, I don't know. I don't know. Right? Well, I but mean, ours is in a can. That we like the form factor of a can. Oh, there you go. Okay. Um, Jay Moyer says, my wife got me a membership in a beer club that sent me 
12 different beers from around the country every month for a year. That's pretty cool. I've seen other breweries do that. I know that BrewDog does that. Uh, Levante locally does that. They have 12 beers. That's, that's awesome. 12 a month? Uh, 12, 12 for the month. different beers a month. 12 different beers. 12 times 12. For, well, for Advent, just for the, uh, the Christmas count. 12 times 12 is? Uh, 120. 144. Oh, I'm Obviously, math, not his strong suit. You know what? It's these beers. And then I, I want to close with this. J.R. Strayhorn wrote, and I really love this. My best Christmas beer gift was my grandfather's beer stein. He earned it from a restaurant in the Midwest where you had to drink 100 different beers to earn entry into their mug club. You have a mug club. Yeah, we sure do at Swarthmore. Works out really well for us. 100 beers required? No, we just, you know, people buy into it and they get special releases. Okay, well, this was 100 beers. He said, my grandfather was a dentist, so Doc is on the engraving. Every December, I fill it and toast him. That's pretty cool. That's pretty nice. All right, want to get a couple other stories in here. World Cup, as we speak, is nearing the finals. December 18th is the big game. Uh, if you remember, just two days before the start of the World Cup, the Qatari government uh, organizers banned beer sales at the tournament's eight stadiums, and this was after all of the vendors had brought their own beer. That was crazy when I heard about that. I'm not a Budweiser fan, but I actually felt bad for them because they shipped all that beer to the UK to be shipped over to Qatar. Yeah, Budweiser spent $75 million for a sponsorship deal, and then they can't sell beer there. So what do you do when you're that company? Well, here's what they did, smart campaign. New day, new tweet. Winning country gets all the buds, who will get them? And they decided they're going to hold a party for whatever country wins, and they get all the beer. Sounds like, what was that, the Lane Johnson promotion for the yes. Super Bowl? Sounds similar. Yes, sounds good. Brilliant idea. Good. I wish I had that kind of money. Very good. And finally, Miller Lite is marketing this, what you will see on your screen, the first ever beer Christmas tree keg stand, uh, which is an invention allowed, uh, allowing beer drinkers to pour draft beer from the base of their Christmas tree. Basically, I mean, why go to the kitchen to grab a can when you can... Right, grab it right there in the living room. <laughs> it is a fully functioning tree stand designed to fit perfectly around a quarter keg. They say a Miller Lite. I imagine you can do it with anything. And you just pour the beer right out of it. Uh, it seems stupid to me. I'm sorry. Well, stupid maybe. <laughs> yeah. But would you use it? Uh, probably not. I'd probably get it on my fridge and I'd get better beer than Miller Lite. All right, well, I don't disagree with that. Coming up next, we're going to talk to a guy who's trying to market, trying to find a whole new place in the market selling Mead. Is that something people will drink? We will find out next. This is What's Brewing from the Ship Bottom Blendery and Barrel House in Swarthmore with Robert Zarco. I'm Glenn Mack now. See you in a minute. Cheers. You don't have to go away to get away. Go and explore. Find the small businesses that make where you live a community. When you dine, choose homemade. On a free weekend, discover the great outdoors. And if it's brewed here, enjoy it with friends. Support small for an experience you won't find anywhere else. Make it local, make it Main Street, make it Motco. Hey, welcome back to What's Brewing. We are at the Ship Bottom Blendery and Barrel House. I always get that right. You got it. There you go. Good In job. Swarthmore, I'm Glenn Macknett with Robert Zarka, and I'm drinking a cider donut cider, which is delicious. But here's the thing. You can drink things other than beer and enjoy them. And to that end, we have with us Scott, Scott Grisbeck. Yep. I got it. You got it. There you go. CEO of Elders Cut Mead out of Berks County. And what did you bring us today? I brought, I brought you some of our best-selling uh, meads. I brought you our classic whiskey barrel, ginger lavender, and lemon hops. But the one in front of you is our classic, our best-selling mead. It is uh, just honey, water, yeast, and uh, magic. Right, we're going we're to try this mead, Robert. You're, you're, you're a beer guy. I, wanna, I want you to try it first. It smells boozy. All right. I like it already. See what you think. It's very good. So here's the thing I noticed with this. I think of mead and I think of Renaissance fairs and you know carrying it around in a ram's horn and really sweet. This is not that sweet. No, no, that's almost completely dry. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, you're right. I, when people think about mead, they think about Renaissance fairs. They think Vikings drinking, drinking it out yeah. of the skulls of their dead enemies and Ooh. all this stuff. I'm all for that. <laughs> I didn't know we had a choice. Sign me up. <laughs> We're working on that. We're working on that. Um, but the, uh, the reality of it is that mead is actually the oldest alcohol in the world. Is that right? It is older than beer, older than wine. But think about it. You have honey, you add water, there's yeast in the air. It's super easy. Right. Okay, so tell people who don't know exactly what, what is mead. What is mead this? Mead is honey and water with, that's fermented by yeast. Similar to wine, some people like to call it honey wine, which I don't like to do because wine is made of grapes. Mm -hmm. And so, but it at least gives people an idea of what it is. But honey is what gets fermented. All right, so you and your partner started this elder's cut out of Berks County. Yes. Um, why, why did you decide to go this direction? Um, well, I was, fermentation is what I have done is for my career. I owned a sauerkraut company for years. Wait, Love you owned a sauerkraut company? I owned a sauerkraut company, the Jacobs Raw brand. Okay. Um, I got out of it eventually, and um, I was itching to ferment something else. Uh -huh. I like alcohol. This was an easy thing to do, and I um, started playing around with it in the kitchen, found out that um, it wasn't that terribly hard to make a really good product. I could flavor it in almost every way. Like meat is so versatile because the flavor of the honey is not overwhelming. Yeah. Let, let me, so as a, as a beer guy, as a guy who tastes and creates these things for a living, describe what you're tasting and where you think this fits in. I initially get the booziness when I'm getting on a smell. When I taste it, the liquid, I, I immediately get a sweetness. I could taste the honey coming through, but then it's very dry. It reminds me almost like a hard cider. I feel like I'm sipping uh, a liqueur, or, yeah. or, you know, as, like a, as opposed to drinking yeah. anything in the in the beer wine family, right? I don't know if you feel the same. So is this something that you go to festivals and introduce people to, so people would come up at a beer festival and you have your mead, and then they don't know what it is, and then you talk through it and introduce it to them, and what kind of reactions do you get from people? Yeah, we definitely do that. It's a great way to get in front of people because people don't really know what to expect with mead. I mean, it's, uh, as we said before, people think of it as a super sweet uh, product, um, if they think of it at all. And so when they try it and they taste what we've done with bringing it dry, with the different ingredients that we've put in, uh, with the high, level, high quality of honey that we use, people are extremely impressed. All right, by the way, it's 12% alcohol. I, to me, I feel like I would drink it like I drink like a cognac. I would drink it at the end of the day by the fireplace, reading a book, something like that, and I think that really works. All right, let's uh, let's end it on this. How do Scott? How do people find you? People people want to look you up online. People want to come to your place. How do they find you? Well, definitely elderscut.com. You Good can day, buy. By the way. Thank, Thank you very day. much. I appreciate it. Um, we are in a lot of restaurants and breweries up in Berks County All and right. Chester County. And we will be in uh, many PLCB stores starting in March. Terrific. I really wish you great luck with that. I think it's, it's a, any new addition to the business seems like a great idea to me. So I wish you guys luck with it. Robert Zarco, it's always a pleasure being with you. In fact, I liked it so much that we're going to be back to Ship Bottom Blendery and Brew House. I got that right, didn't I? In Swarthmore next week. We'll see you then for What's Brewing. Cheers. What's Brewing is brought to you in part by Monco Makers Passport. Download your free digital pass and sip your way through Montgomery County. And by the Conshohocken Brewing Company, the perfect place for your holiday gathering. Reach out today at events at conshohockenbrewing.com.